What's going on guys, Sunny aka The Random Recorder here, and back in April you guys might remember that I made a video about a scene from Avengers Endgame as part of the One Marvelous Scene project started by fellow YouTuber Nando V Movies. Well everyone, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the X-Men film franchise, he started yet another initiative known as the One Excellent Scene Movement. You see, it's a pun on X-Men, because it's excellent. Anyway, in this video we're going to be talking about our excellent scene, the opening of Logan. In my opinion, Logan is easily one of the most underrated comic book movies to have been released in the last decade, and as the culmination to Wolverine's character on screen, it was a perfect send-off to Hugh Jackman's portrayal of the character. One of the best parts about the movie was its tone, which was notably darker and more serious than the popular superhero movies at the time, most notably the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. And as much of a hot take as this might be, I honestly think the MCU could learn a thing or two from Logan. In this video, my goal is to dissect Logan's opening to illustrate how the writers created its distinct tone and to compare it to Avengers Endgame in an attempt to explain how I feel the film could benefit from some of the things Logan does. One of the first things that the writers included in the film was a time skip. For those of you who don't know what a time skip is, it's exactly what it sounds like. A time skip is when a very significant amount of time has passed between two points in a series. This isn't usually just one or two days here, we're talking months, sometimes years, as is the case with Logan. Why do writers do this, you may ask? Well, I've got just the guy to answer that question. James Mangold, the director of Logan himself. A while back, I got to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with him, which is the coolest thing I'll ever get to do as a YouTuber, so Mr. Mangold, if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, but anyway, here's what he had to say as to why the writers decided to include a time skip. I just tried to place it far enough away from all existing movies so that I could account for Charles's decline and the other changes that had happened. It was always happening in the future as I needed to get past what existed. So in a nutshell, the advantage to having this time skip is that it gives the movie the ability to give you the information at its own pace, which serves to make each bit of information more engaging. See, previous X-Men movies, particularly 2013's The Wolverine, have already delved a bit into what Logan's powers look like when they're just starting to fail. Fans who have been paying attention to the movies pretty much already know what it looks like. So instead of showing you Logan's powers partially failing and getting worse over time, it simply skips that to get to a point where Logan's powers are next to gone. It just picks right up with him, both broke and broken, visibly aging faster than ever before, struggling to pull his claws out and get the bullets out of him, worried more about the damage done to his car than to his own body. Get the no! Not the car! Ah! There's a very clear change in our favorite Canadian superhero here, and one of my favorite tidbits that sorta of contributes to this is the title drop. It's not grand or accompanied by an exciting musical flourish. It's small and quiet, just kind of there. Because that's a perfect description of Logan himself. Everyone around him is dead, and he lacks a sense of purpose. He too is just kind of there on Earth at this point. As Mangled puts it, he's embittered, self-hating, haunted, and wishing for a death to escape. Violence is also used to further the tone in Logan, as well as to establish the theme, and this is featured in the opening when Logan fights the carjackers. In most superhero movies, fight scenes are meant for spectacle and grandeur, and in action films they are played off as being cool. Logan instead forces its fight scenes to be gruesome, uncomfortable, and integral to the message of the film. Mangold says, I feel most movie violence is sanitized. Shots ring out by the hundreds, bombs, and explosions as well but the actual reality of death is sanitized for audiences. Logan's life was one of violence, both perpetrated upon him and in the violence he had inflicted on others. It seemed imperative to dramatize this. Also, he's a man with claws. We'd never seen what he could do with them in the film before, and that had a weird effect of making him comical to me. I wanted the intensity. Even his name, Wolverine, is the name of a wild animal. I felt we needed to see that. And he's right. In his fight with the carjackers, Logan is more savage than we've seen him in other movies. He's cutting limbs off, and he's going right for their heads with his claws, as the handheld camera serves to intensify his rage being unleashed later on in the fight. As you can see, our opening very effectively sets a serious tone for the film, and one of my favorite aspects of the movie is how it refuses to betray this feeling. For example, when I asked Mangled about potentially using humor to lighten up the film, he had this to say. I have nothing against the humor that occurs in life, but the idea of adding wisecracks and one-liners seemed entirely out of line to me tonally. Never really thought about it. Not for The Wolverine, his 2013 movie, either. 
This is the point in the video where I'm gonna bring up Endgame. The movie wants to sell you on the idea that everything is extremely post-apocalyptic, and that this is the very last shot for our heroes to fix things, even like Logan utilizing a 23-day time skip early on. Remember, this is supposed to be our big way of showing the audience that our heroes are different now. But the thing is, they're not, and they're all still making jokes. That's cute. Thanos has a retirement plan. Don't get me wrong, the jokes themselves are funny and all, but that's exactly the problem. They feel really out of place here, and it takes you out of the movie, especially on rewatches. Mangold didn't do this, and his unique approach to the superhero movie genre is what elevates Logan to another level, and that starts with this opening scene. It's a very distinct and a both literally and figuratively dark opening putting forth a clear tone for the rest of the movie, and setting up our protagonist before he goes on his final journey. And that's why this is one excellent scene. If you haven't seen Logan, you definitely should watch it and let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. I'll also be leaving the One Excellent Scene playlist down there if you want to check those videos out, and I totally recommend it. They're all really good. Thanks to Nano V Movies for starting this, and a huge thanks to James Mangold for agreeing to let me interview him. That's seriously, again, probably the coolest thing I'll ever get to do. But that's going to be all for today. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you liked it, and if you loved it, consider subscribing. That's all. Ren Recorders. Peace out.